This is Ken from 3D Mojo, and I'm basically trying to show everyone how to adjust this non 90 degree part of the frame that pretty much works with all the different printers like CR10s, uh, Ender 3s, and all the Creality's, and some of the other A nets and stuff that look very similar. Uh, one of the problems that I noticed when I got this was I had so many things wrong with it. This was a uh, CR10 Mini, and the glass bed had about a 2 millimeter dip in it. The heat bed was warped. Um, I had a problem trying to get the uh, tramming correct because the wheels were loose over here on this side. Um, that caused a bad issue with the um, Y-axis being a little canted. And then I noticed that these were also tilting forward and, you know, a couple more things. So just kind of got tired of, you know, deciding, uh, am I going to return it or just go ahead and fix it and bite the bullet and get this thing done. So here we go. Basically, uh, you're going to need a few things. If you're like a beginner repair person, you'll need some uh, aluminum foil, standard stuff from your kitchen. Um, I like to use this to help smooth it out whenever I'm folding it. Uh, a pair of scissors or some kind of knife to cut your foil and a large um, Allen wrench that came with your Creality printer and some type of decent square. In this particular case, I have a uh, US, I don't know why, it's just got US stamped on it and uh, military grade or government grade triangle and uh, it works very well. So um, for me, I just put this down the bottom and make sure that you're not leaning over the extrusions, uh, the other extrusion because you want to only measure the one you're working with and uh, Make sure it's flat down here, going all the way across the bottom. And then as you go up, you'll slowly start to see the gaps. And I think you can see that right through here. So uh, when I ended up measuring this, I got about 1.2 millimeters of gap, which is really bad because as you're printing higher, your head is, your, your um, hot end is starting to lean over more and more and more. And after a while, you'll start to notice it. Now. If it's open here, it's going to be the opposite on the other side. So let's try that. Now again, we shouldn't be measuring over this, but just, just to show the point. Uh, what happens is now is it doesn't want to touch correctly down here. It's like the opposite. So when I did a degrees measurement on this, I found out that this side was actually at 89 degrees and this side was at 91 degrees. So um, just for fun, I tried doing some shims a little bit earlier to see if it would work out well. If you'll notice, I've got everything off of this because I really want to tighten up the whole unit. I want to make sure the bottom's square. I want to make sure these are square. And I want to make sure that these are in perfect parallelness to each other. So now if I take this square here, which is very accurate, and if you'll notice, it rubs here and it rubs down here and there are no gaps anywhere so it rubs here and it rubs up top and i've got a perfect 90 degrees now all i did was add some very small aluminum or tin foil shims here this particular side ended up being three folds of a tin foil uh, which ended up being 0 0.05 millimeters and now it's it's very firm one of the problems is that a lot of people like to uh, take the rods and do that little adapter where they put it in like this and they try to pull this and I noticed that as I pulled it a little bit to try to take up for the angle I was actually bowing the extrusion so if you're bowing your extrusion it's not doing you any good it's still going to go like this we don't want it to do this curve we want it to be straight up and down and 90 degrees perpendicular to the base so this one is very good i used a uh, machinist rule and as i was setting this one up i made sure that it was parallel with the other side okay and then what i ended up doing was uh, double checking it with a small square and that worked out really well too just put that on there got it on the extrusion and there's no wobble or space in there so that was good so this side is ready to go. The only thing I don't know is if I adjust all these other corners, it may make them off a little bit. I may have to redo that. So let's work on this side. Using your large supplied Creality 
Allen wrench, go ahead and loosen this up about a turn each to begin with just to get it wobbling. All right, so that should do that. Okay, now, I'm not sure how much I need to put down here. You can see it wobbles a lot with just that one turn. Just for fun, since the other side took, if you'll notice I've, I've made some different folds of um, aluminum foil here. And uh, I guess I can show you that real quick. All I did was take some tin foil from the kitchen I smoothed it out like that and then I took it over here kind of lined it up so it was nice and square and made me a nice little fold then I took that and folded it over put it back over here gave it a good crease again then looking at how wide it was I put it back up and did the same thing again to give me a, a nice three fold then I just folded that over making sure not to uh, fold it on top of itself because if you end up, which that one almost did, um, you're going to end up with one that's not exactly uh, three thicknesses thick if you let it fold over on top of the corner. So once I had that done, I just ironed it out like that. In my particular case, I use a Sharpie to mark the thicknesses, took my scissors, cut out the shim, and that's pretty much it. That's a hopefully a 0 0.05 millimeter shim because it's folded three times, just as these say. Okay, now, um, sadly, I'm wearing this camera on my hat just because I was trying to do this in a hurry. I wasn't going to make a video. Then I thought, you know, there's a lot of people that probably could use this little tip. So again, 0 0.05 millimeters will be our start. And what I'm going to do now is gently snug the Allen just a little bit. There's a little there. I don't want to get it too tight yet. And just almost there, not, not much, because I want to be able to adjust it a little bit. And just for fun, I want to go ahead and make sure that this is flat here. And if you can see that's not flat right there. There's a little bit of a gap. So while that's there, I'm going to rotate this. See how that rotates? That's better. So flat there, flat there. Lift it up gently and do a gentle snug again. Yeah. And I would always check this to make sure that it's parallel with the other side before I continued on to another repair or adjustment I should say. Now I have no idea if that's the correct shim or not. But there's only one way to find out. Okay, got the bottom lined up properly. Nope. In fact, it needs to go on the other side. I've actually increased it. So, my mistake. And this is why we check it. Never take it for granted that it's going to work with that one time. Okay. shim back out. Place the shim back on this side. That's what I get for not paying attention. I gotta do this quickly. Family's getting ready to go to a movie. Christmas holiday time. Alright, again. Gentle, snug. Just enough so I can move it around. You know, and this is what everybody with their new printer should be doing to begin with, even if it uh, was factory assembled or if it's an Ender 3 and you've got to assemble the whole thing, don't trust it. Because I learned out the hard way that it is really uh, out of whack. I have wasted days upon days and lots of PLA thinking everything was my fault until I realized where all the faults were starting to lie with the unit. Okay, so let's see. There we go. See? That right there is nice and flush. There's no gaps in the bottom, and this corner here is not lifting up at all. Hear that? So now, this one is perfect. Just to verify, I want to check it for parallelness. One more time. No gaps. And flat over there. So right now, this surface is parallel to each other 
which means I don't have to worry about this canting as the y-axis is going up and or I'm sorry yeah the y-axis is going up and no x-axis is going up and down I don't have to worry about it doing anything wrong there I've got it as straight as I can so now it's not leaning forward again like it was before and now I'm just going to uh, see about these corners here also um, you might want to pay attention to some of these future videos I want to put out I've got a ton of modifications because I am kind of tired of adjusting things. I did this little uh, fitted over the fan mod, which is really nice. I mean, it works very good, but uh, I'm tired of having the tram level everything. So I'm using these solid spacers uh, that I got from um, TH3D. And what I'll be doing here is replacing these with this. Uh, and in doing that, I'll be adding their... I'm sorry, uh, the Easy Able, which is uh, one of the sensors that they make at uh, th3dstudios.com. And um, I got the one that actually has got the simple power supply that runs off a of USB because they give you an adapter to allow you to do the hard wiring later. So right now I just want to get it running, but in order to use that, you have to also flash your um, uh, card uh, with a bootloader and you have to put a different version of the firmware in, firmware in there. In their particular case it is a uh, Marlin firmware that's been modified and had all the bugs removed uh, and that way you can use the Easy Able and also you can use their simple little mechanical switch uh, filament runout sensor which is also very nice so that'll be two nice upgrades and from what I also heard it has a not perfect, but a uh, basically if your power turns off during your printing, you can resume later. But uh, I bought a little kit from TH3D, which included all four spacers. Uh, here's the one that will end up having the um, zip ties around it to hold the heat bed part to it, so I don't mess the cables up. And then this one holds a GoPro camera, so that's kind of cool. So can't wait to get those on. And when I do that for the base, I'm gonna end up putting on all these re replacement palm wheels. Uh, these are a much harder, more durable uh, type of palm wheel than what you normally get. Uh, I think I ended up paying about $30 for enough of these to do the whole unit, the whole system on every wheel. I also will be doing a uh, dual Z-Rod uh, using um, better uh, bearings or pillow block kind of bearings. Um, with a much just better system so that I get a better, uh, more stable Z. And I, I really love these uh, tensioners that go inside these Z, Z uh, rods so that you don't have any backlashing or um, a lot of movement. So we have a lot of things we're gonna be doing. Here's some actual tensioners for your springs. And these are pretty cool because they keep a consistent tension on your springs so you don't have to worry about them constantly uh, getting loose and popping off gears and stuff. And here is um, uh, E3D Volcano. No, actually not the Volcano. There's just the E3D head I'm going to put on there, V6. Uh, try that out. And, of course, we're going to be doing the standard um, SD full-size conversion from the little mini SD, which, personally, I think everybody dislikes. And I got a bunch of these wonderful Sunon uh, type of fans which are supposed to be a more of a professional industrial quality than say some of the silent ones that you've heard about and I did buy a decibel meter so we'll see exactly how good these things are so I got a bunch of those to put on uh, we've even got uh, some um, stepper uh, motor um, smoothers you know hopefully these little diode smoothers will do something for it these are TL smoothers of course everybody puts these little cute little uh, NEMA 17 motor shock mounts on to help quiet them down too. So, you know, just tons of stuff to put on here. Got all types of gears to replace and everything. Looking forward to that. Now, onward through the fog. Let me remove this out of the way and uh, let's, let's get set up for the next stage. So this one's good. The other side's good. And now we need to get the actual corners good. And I did notice they were slightly, and I do mean slightly, off. This would have been one of the better measurements done at the factory. So this is flat, flat, and when I get up to the top, it, uh, this chef's getting me, hold on. There we go. 
there is just ever so slight. I mean, that is, that's hardly anything to even think about, but you know, why not? I'll give it one go and see how it goes. If it's too much trouble, I'm not gonna worry about it. So let me take a minute to uh, check the batteries and everything on the camera and uh, we'll get started with this in just a moment.